that would allow for you to walk up to a mountain <laughs> and tell you to speak to a mountain to have it moved into the sea or have you walk up to a closed door <laughs> that only he can open isn't that something our God is always getting the victory I told one of our members in the 845 service they had a testimony there was some resources that was held up and they said pastor I caught a hold of that thing last week start praising God said they got a call that the resource opened up and she said pastor I got the victory I said that's all we do at Bethesda is get the victory hallelujah we just keep on getting the victory <laughs> you know I've been I've been pretty interested in in what Deion Sanders is doing at Colorado I've been kind of looking into that and Yesterday, we were, me and Lady Nell, we were sitting down and I was watching the game and there was three minutes left and it was 28 to 20. And so I said, well, let me cut off the TV. It's, it's pretty much over and stuff. Let me cut it off. And so we went on and started getting ready, ready for church. Amen. Trying to pick out a little outfit or whatever we going. <laughs> I wake up this morning and they done won the game. Because <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. I said it ain't over till it's over. Amen. And I want some of you to know you might be at the last minute, looks like of your game. But as long as you got God on your team. I don't know how he does it, but he has a way of turning things around. Is there anybody here that know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and he has a way of making ways, and so we do thank God for that. And I do want to um, encourage all of you that are sitting here right now, I want to see you in Bible class. Those of you who are watching online as well, at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays, we have online Bible study on Facebook. I would love to see all of you in the chat putting a comment in as the teachers are teaching. They do an awesome job. Minister Ryan is normally leading that. Can you celebrate Minister Ryan? <laughs> Amen. And, and then on Wednesday night, we have in-person Bible study. And, and I want you to be right here at Bethesda Central at 7 p.m. We were just dealing with the spirit of blackmail. Amen. Amen. The spirit of blackmail. And we want to see you in the house of God. The Lord is blessing us here. Amen. It's good to see Lady Net. Amen. She is our women's leader along with Sister Nakia. And uh, we, we thank God for uh, them. If you would be so kind to turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews and, and chapter 11. This morning, I preached a message in 845 called The Demands of Faith. The Demands of Faith. And we want to continue that discussion in this service. Hebrews 11. Verse number 13. When you have it, can you say amen? Well, let's read it together. Ready? Read. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. Verse 16, 
but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Can you say amen? This morning, I'd like to preach from the title, The Danger of Attempting to Move Forward While Looking Back. The Danger of Attempting to Move Forward While Looking Back. Every patriarch in scripture, God had to call them from somewhere. And in the book of Hebrews, and particularly in the discourse in 11, what the Lord has Paul do is begin to itemize patriarchs, or those that, that God had moved on or God had spoken to, to go from one place to another, to be an example unto us in 2023 on what faith looks like because faith definitely has a look. It has a behavior, it has a response, it has an action. It is not something that is just in the conceptual, but it is reality in the kingdom. It is the way in which God would have us prove that we trust him. Because when I have faith, I have to have trust and because I trust him, God then honors his own word in my life. So the Lord gives us examples of men and women of God who had some type of life before they came in contact with God. This is very significant. I need you to lean in. I don't understand how God or why God does it this way you would seem as though since we were known of him or predestined by him before the foundations of the world, that he would have allowed us all to be born understanding who he is, that we would have been born already having some type of knowledge of who he is, that the first voice that we would have heard would have been him since we came from him based on the doctrine that I was already known of him. He told, he told Jeremiah that before you were even formed in the womb, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I had already sanctioned you and ordained you to be a prophet to speak my word. So if the Lord already knew me, then how come he wouldn't allow me to know him at birth? Life might have been a little bit easier if I just came right out of the womb already with a knowledge of who he is. And then when I was two and three and four and five, my mother's voice wouldn't have been the first voice. My daddy's voice wouldn't have been the first voice, but rather God's voice would have been my first voice. But that's not the way God has designed it. He allows for us to come into the earth realm without having consciousness about who he is. He allows for us to be born to a mother and a father in whatever land, whatever country, whatever predicament. He allows us to come through that portal and he allows them to be the first weavers, as it were, or first nurturers, as it were, of who we would be. It was your mother and father that literally shaped your identity in the natural realm. You have gestures like them. You have behaviors like them. Some of you may not like it, but you act just like your mama. <clears throat> Y'all not going to go with me today. Hey, man, you act just like your daddy. Hey Amen. No matter how you try, you got that look, the way you do your lips. It's just like your mama do her lips and all of that. Because she was your first nurturer. She was the first verse, voice that was in your life. And so God allows for that to happen. He allowed for those of us in continental United States to go to the public school system. Most of us did. And we went through a public system that had other nurturers. They had teachers.
teachers and they had other kids that also participated in the nurturing process and we picked up some of their behaviors. I need you to lean in. I'm going somewhere this morning. They, they gave us their behaviors. They gave us some of their antics, some of their gestures, some of their language and we picked that up and then it became our own and then we got a little bit older and we met other teachers, other professionals, our aunties, our uncles, our family and they all helped to form who we are in the natural realm. Mind you, this all was happening before the Lord ever spoke to you and told you to give you his life. Do you give him your life? The Lord, before he tells you, hey, give me your life, he allows for you to have a life outside of him. He allows for that life to be big in your life. He allows you to only have that identity so that when you would come to him, he's asking you to leave it all behind. But it becomes difficult to leave it all behind when I have 33 years of being me behind. Oh, yeah, I'm going somewhere today. It's tough. You know, we, we make it seem like it's so easy as Christians when we say, just repent. Well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what that is, but I'm 43 years old now, and all I've ever known was that music I listened to. All I've ever known was that behavior that I do. All that I've ever known was the way I respond to trouble. All I've ever known was to be angry. The reason why I'm mad dog, and don't ever give people expression, because that's the way I I learned to keep bad people away from me. So I have an attitude, I have gestures, I have um, little idiosyncrasies about myself that I've gathered in the world. And if the Lord didn't want me to have that, I wish he would have stopped it at two. But he didn't stop it at two. He just allowed it to get bigger and bigger. And it's, it's one thing that I had an attitude at 12, but now I'm 22 with a big old attitude. And so when you tell me, Lord, to leave it behind, it becomes very difficult now because although I'm ready to go forward, I still got a lot of stuff in my back. I got a lot of stuff in my back now, Lord. I got a lot of stuff in the foul cabinet. I got a lot of stuff in the baggage. I got a lot of stuff in my pockets. And although I'm trying to relinquish it at the altar, Lord, there's some things about me that I don't even know that I have. I don't even know why I fall apart every time something goes wrong in my life. And it's all because I have baggage when I come to you. Can I preach like I feel? And then this baggage now is very dangerous because because what the preacher man gets up, Pastor Brookins gets up and says, it's time to go forward. The problem is many of you have all types of luggage behind you. You have baggage behind you and you have things holding you around your waist that even when you're trying to move forward, something is always pulling you back. My God, I got to preach this morning. I wish there were about 20 people in here that understood that sometimes it's not, it's not what's ahead of you you that makes you scared. It's what's behind you that still has your emotion. It's not what ahead of you that you're worried about because God has shown you something beautiful ahead of you, but it's what behind me that I still have a love affair with because it's hard to love two masters. It's hard to love two masters, no matter how you try to work it, no matter how you try to fix it up, Ryan, it's very difficult when you have two masters. So what we do in the house of God is we try to set the atmosphere. We try to start out with prayer to try to till up the ground. And then we try to read a scripture to try to till it up more. And then we put the worship team up to try to get you into a place of worship to try to get you to forget about your bags and just trust God. Because if I can ever just trust God, he'll handle the baggage. If I can ever trust God, he will help me let go of my past. If I can just trust God, my past won't have dominion over me. But it's when I'm in the space of looking behind and trying to go forward that I ultimately crash. 
It's very dangerous, children of God, to try to go forward while looking in the rear view mirror. The rear view mirror is supposed to, amen, be a design that allows for you to see what's coming up beside you so that you don't switch lanes too quick. I got to work hard this morning, amen. But the idea of the rear view mirror is not for it to be the portal that allows you to go forward. And I know that history is important. I used to be a history history teacher and I would tell my kids you have to know your past so you don't repeat it in your future but sometimes your past will be adjacent in your life and allow for you a man to be held hostage to what it was and you can never see what shall be God is trying to take the people of God to the shall be but as they're going to the shall be they don't want to leave everything behind now I got to really work in here I want you to understand that I've been in church a long time and I've seen people come and brag about what they left behind and oftentimes it's all the stuff they didn't want they, they, they brag about the stuff that they didn't want. Amen. You know, I mean, I can brag all day about me having been an alcoholic. I want you to know that I didn't want it no more because I, had, I couldn't even remember how I got home. There was times I woke up in my own vomit. It was a horrible experience. So you didn't have to tell me too much to leave it behind because I knew that the only other option was that I was going to die. Y'all not going to help me preach in here today. So it was easier for me to come and say Lord take this away because what I was asking him to take away was bad to my perception in my life but there were some things that were good in my perception in my life that the Lord said leave it behind and it's those things that I've struggled through my Christian walk as I've tried to move forward not to look back every now and then and say mm, that show sounds good I want you to understand that you can never have the breakthrough power of God in your life if you're trying to move forward with him while you're looking back Ah, God, amen, amen. Ain't no need, amen, to come up and say, Pastor, pray this off of me. I want you to know there's some things I can't pray off of you, and it's all of those things that you're holding on to. Yeah, I can't pray it off you if you holding on to it. If you holding on to it, don't even come down to the altar. The only thing I can pray off of you are the things that you are against your will trying to hold on to you. If you got a devil in your life holding on to you against your will, we can bind that in the name of Jesus. If you got a spirit of witchcraft in your family tree that you want out of your house, I can come anoint your house and I'm telling you that devil will go. But if it's something that you're harboring in your heart and you actually really like it uh, there's no way for me to bind it out of your life because it's not holding on to you you're holding on to it <laughs> lady Nat, they got me working too hard let me finish this up in here today i want you to look at your neighbor and say leave it behind Oh, God, I wish I had some prophets and prophetess up in here, amen, that can point your holy finger at your neighbor. I know you ain't supposed to point it, for, but point right at your neighbor and say, leave it behind. Because there is something releasing about leaving it behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you something. There's something interesting about moving, Kira. You know, when you start moving, amen, you start cleaning out your drawers and you start cleaning out the dresser and you start cleaning out your closet. And ultimately, you find some things in your closet that you haven't worn in a long time, but you still don't want to let go of. You open up the dresser drawer and saw paperwork in there that you ain't seen in three years and you say, well, I don't know, I might need it, so I'm going to take it with me. I, and that's you, I'm talking about you. You have shoes that you ain't even touched that you still don't want nobody else to have uh, because you're harboring it and it has become uh, your idol. And I want you to know that the Lord is saying in this walk, you got to leave everything behind uh, that I'm not telling you you to take with you he said yeah 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 bring your son with you bring your daughter with you but sometimes you'll have to leave them behind temporarily until you can get to the place of destination I, I gotta work a little harder now I want you to know that your cousin and them are keeping you from being blessed because you keep coming over their house week after week but the Lord is saying wait a minute just pause just go on a cousin and them fast 
Just go on a cousin in them fast, amen. Say, for the next six months, I ain't going to see them crazy relatives of mine. And I'm just going to get in Bible study. And I'm going to hear the word of God. And as I begin to move forward, he's going to anoint me and give me the power to be able to stand up. So that when I walk past a bar, I don't have to have a drink. So when I walk past a smoke shop, I don't need a smoke. So that when I walk past, amen, my ex-enemy, I don't want to fight. So that when I, y'all not still talking up here. I want you to understand he wants to give you the victory so that when you actually do get sent back, you can actually pull somebody back with you. Give somebody the high five and say it's time to go forward. Yeah, it's time to go forward and this is what the Hebrew writer was trying to tell them some of you are so in bondage to relationships you don't know how to be all on or all alone yeah 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 you just got the victory over one demonic situation and now you're back into another one because you're a Addicted, amen to having someone next to you and if you don't have somebody to hold your hand you feel as though you're not beautiful but I want you to know the Lord holds your hand uh, you're not going to help me preach in here I want you to know the Lord will hold your hand I want you to know that the Lord will rock you to sleep I want you to know the Lord will dry your tears amen you don't need another woman you need a God you don't need another man you need a God you don't need to have no more children amen you don't ruin the ones you had y'all not talking back to me here you need a God on your side because when you get a God on your side he says I'll show you how to move forward with victory I'll show you how to move forward with power I'll show you how to move forward with peace I'll show you how to move forward with joy I'll show you how to move forward be able to lift up your hands and say I got the victory somebody throw your head back and say it's time to move forward the Bible says that the patriarchs all came from somewhere to God's space points out that Abel wasn't just a holy man of God but God had to take him from one place to the next space and Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice to God I feel like preaching hallelujah and God called him faithful I want you to understand that Noah God had to take him from one place to another place Sometimes when we're in the house of God and you, you see some of the seasoned saints of God, you think they've always been seasoned. You think that Mother Harris always was holy. Amen. She's sitting over there to the right. I'm going to talk about her. Amen. Right to her face. She wasn't always a holy woman of God. God had to save her. Had to turn her around, had to place her feet on a solid ground, had to wipe her tears without hands, amen, and bring her into the kingdom. She wasn't always thinking about God in the morning and in the noonday and late at night. I want you to know, amen, but she had to leave something behind, amen. Angie wasn't always the woman of God she is. God had to take her from one place to the other. I want you to know, Deacon. Nola Connie wasn't always a head deacon. Uh, he had to come from somewhere. Uh, I want you to know that wherever your where was, uh, God has the ability to wash you from your past uh, and allow for you to have the boldness to leave it all behind. Uh, oh God, I, 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 I got to work today. I want you to know there's something very liberating about walking out of that relationship and saying, take it all. You can have the house, you can have the keys, you can have the car, you can have the money, you can have the accounts, uh, but I won't be back no more. Uh, and they're calling and texting you, trying to get you to be wooed back into the relationship. But when God tells you to leave out, you got to leave all the way out, which means don't even take a paper clip. Uh, just leave out and I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be the God that supplies your needs according to my riches and glory. I'm going to be the God 
that holds you up in the midnight hour. I'm going to be the God that gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm going to be the God that fights your battle when your enemy comes one way. They're going to have to leave seven way. I'm going to be the God that's going to allow for you to lift up your hands in the house of God when you should be crying. You're going to be speaking in tongues because I'm going to give you the victory. I dare you to find two people on your row and say I got to move forward. 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 The Bible says that Abraham left Tehran left his father's house and followed after God. He followed God and didn't know where he was going because where he was going was God. There is a place called God that when you leave everything that he's telling you to leave behind he says what you get out of the deal is not a new house you don't get a new home you don't get a new car what you get is me you don't get new clothes you don't get new shoes but you get me you don't get new friends oh god I gotta work today you don't get none of that but you do get me and the Lord says as long as you have me the blessed sore you don't have to worry about the blessed sin I am the God that if you get me I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing if you get me I'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory if you get me I'll cause your enemies to be your footstool if you just get me I wish I had 52 and a half people in here that would simply say I just want more God I don't need more pastor I don't need more singer I don't need more usher I just need more God I don't need more church I just need more God I don't need more stuff I just need more God I don't need more religion I just need more God I don't need more freaking frack I just need more he points out people of God that there was patriarchs who decided to leave it behind I was talking with an associate, Alton, and I said, this is some kind of new Holy Ghost people getting. It's some type of Casper. It's the dirty ghost. It got them hearing things that are not like God. This new ghost Got them listening to hell music and still thinking they saved. This new ghost got them going to dangerous places and still thinking it's holy. This new ghost, I ought to write a book. This new ghost calls them to come in church and look like they're eating prunes. But the ghost that I got had me lifting up my hands. Yeah. The ghost I got had me put running in my feet. And the ghost I got want me want to live right. And before you tell me I was wrong, I already done repented because I got the old Holy Ghost. I, I got that kind of ghost that makes you oily. The ghost that make you want to read your word. The ghost that make you want to fast. The ghost that make you want to pray. The ghost that make you want to study. You're not talking back to me. I wish I had just 16 people that had the old Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost make you clap your hands. Holy Ghost make you do your dance. Holy Ghost make you live up right. Holy Ghost make you speak what's right. Holy Ghost make you go to the right place. Holy Ghost tell you to burn all that other stuff and listen to his word. Holy Ghost make you come home to your wife. Even when she nagging. Holy Ghost say go home and give her loving. Go on and give her a kiss on the cheek when you come in. Holy Ghost and the Bible makes it plain that these people all had a chance can I wrap this up y'all they all had a chance sister Michelle to go back if they wanted to I'm now in verse number 14 because the Bible says for they 
that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, which means we realize that we're pilgrims just passing through, that this is not our home, y'all. And, and, and make sure you pay your mortgage this week. Please make sure you pay your rent this week. Please make sure you pay your car note this week. Please make sure you pay your light bills this week, but this is not your home. Please make sure you're nice to the people on your job. Uh, please make sure, amen, that you stand in line at the grocery store and be polite, uh, but this is not your home. Uh, I'm trying to raise up a new generation of apostolic people who understand that this is not their home. Uh, you're spending too much time thinking about a place that you ain't gonna be for eternity. You ought to be investing a more time time uh, into the country God is taking you into. He says, I have a place for you. Uh, hallelujah. That's not made with hands. Uh, he says, I have many mansions there and if it were not so, I would have told you so. He says, I'm trying to get you ready for the rapture. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that you have the right composition uh, and that you're filled with my spirit uh, so that when I crack that sky, you shall be changed uh, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Uh, he says, I'm just trying to get you ready. Uh, that's why I allowed them to leave you, because I'm trying to get you ready. Uh, but I need you to trust me uh, to keep moving forward even when you don't feel like it. Can I preach like I feel? Uh, give somebody a high five uh, and say, keep moving forward. Y'all didn't say nothing. Find the next person and say, keep moving forward. Uh, yeah, the Bible says that in verse number 15, and truly, if they had been mindful of the country from which they came, uh, they would have had an opportunity to return. Uh, if they had been thinking about where they had been, uh, they would have been able to begin to go back uh, from where they came. Uh, hallelujah. One of our dear sisters this morning uh, gave us a story of how God uh, had told her to leave out of Haiti. Uh, amen. And she was just wondering, was it God? Uh, amen. But she stepped out on faith uh, and made it here. She says, and I'm so glad and I'm so happy uh, because hey man, when the Lord is telling you to step out, uh, it doesn't mean you don't like some of the stuff behind. Uh, it just means that you love God more. Uh, can I preach like I feel. Some people think that when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, you stop having likes in your past. Uh, there are lots of things you might like, uh, but your spirit don't like it. Uh, because remember, you're not all spirit. Uh, you are spirit, body, and soul. Uh, and sometimes your body is addicted to what was in your past. Uh, sometimes your emotions are addicted to what was in your past. Uh, but your spirit it has to be fully committed uh, to say I'm going to walk with God uh, and sometimes this is uh, a lonely walk uh, I'm trying to keep my emotions down today uh, sometimes God will allow for you to go through the darkest days of your life uh, and it will feel like you were all alone uh, can you see Jesus people of God uh, here he is the son of the living God uh, Hey man, he was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Because uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh, Jesus was God manifested in flesh. Uh, the Lord allowed the father allowed for him to wait to the age of 30 to begin his ministry. Uh, he called a few vagabonds, 12 men uh, to come and be his disciples can you see Jesus now he even declared that they were his friends he has disciples who are also friends he has somebody that he can socialize with and he can share his heart but there came a time when the father had to separate him I feel like preaching now had to separate him out so he told Jesus to go to Gethsemane and Jesus took Peter, James and John
I got to preach now. He told them, come with me. But the Bible says he had to leave them behind a little way. He fell down on his knees and prayed to the Father. He says, if it be possible, take this cup from me. And the Father answered him, not the word. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When he got done praying, his bestest friends were all asleep. And there were soldiers there waiting to take him brown. The soldiers took him into the court. And they scrutinized him and beat him. And they threw him to the next court. And they scrutinized him and beat him. And threw him to the next court. Now he's all by himself. His main homie Peter even denied him so now Jesus is all alone he's being forced to carry a cross he's trying to carry the cross with a beaten and wounded body with a crown of thorns on his head he falls down and Simon picks it up for him he is hung on a cross and he looks up to heaven and says why oh God has thou forsaken me he was all alone all by himself his body went limp and they put it in a borrowed tomb but on the third day he rose up with all power in his hands he told his disciples to go wait at Jerusalem for the comforter for when you receive the comforter he shall be with you and he shall guide you into all truth look at your neighbor and say I'm never alone the Bible says that all of these people they had to leave something God has called his people to leave something behind so as you go forward towards the glory you're gonna hear poverty trying to call you from your past but I want to encourage you Lot's wife don't look back as you go forward to the peace of God you're gonna hear confusion calling from your past but I'm encouraging you don't look back get somebody by the hand and say neighbor don't look back because the enemy is in the past your past is in the past your guilt is in the past the sin is in the past the heaviness is in the past you gotta keep on moving forward and even if you're by yourself you gotta keep on walking give somebody a high five and say keep on walking keep on talking uh, keep on holding uh, keep on moving uh, I feel like crying uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, I feel like dying uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, all my friends left uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, I am confused uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, I don't know how I'm gonna make it uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, I'm broke as a joke uh, but I gotta keep on walking uh, cause God has something for me uh, and I gotta trust uh, that if God be for me uh, who can be against me uh, give somebody a high five uh, and say move forward uh, God's about to do it uh, move forward God's about to change it move forward God's about to fix it move forward God's about to heal it move forward God's about to shake it move forward God's about to pluck it up hallelujah so say I so say I Wait a minute. Stand up all over the church. The Bible says if they
they had been mindful of their past. Thank you, sir. If they had been thinking about where they're coming from, if they were sitting up on Saturday night saying it sure would be nice to be at the club, I wonder what Nana and them doing. I wonder what Ski Lo doing. I wonder what Julio doing. I wonder what they doing. There ain't nobody calling me. They don't even call me no more. Let me send out a little text to see if anybody know my number anymore. I want you to know block every number. And say, I got to live for God. If I got to go down, I got to go down with God. If I got to hurt, I got to hurt with God. If I got to fall, I got to fall with God. I'm trying to bring you into my world. Because all I know is God. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, there's no way I would be here today. So I got to give him the glory. You think you're the only one that hurts? We have people in this church who have lost loved ones, had to survive cancer, Mother Smith, one year she loses a baby girl, loses a daughter. The next year she loses her son. Enough to drive someone crazy. But she found herself the next week in the house of God. I'm trying to grow some of you guys up. Because that's all she knows. All she knows is the worship of God. All she knows is the hymns of God. All she knows is the praise of God. And I want that to be all you know. When you start feeling down, don't you pull out the Beyonce album. You better lift up, amen, the gossip and listen. Lord, I want to praise you. Lord, I want to love you. I ain't thinking about my ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend. I got to think about that ex-devil that I just left. And say, God, if you be for me. You better than the world against me. Don't put out no Luther Vandross. I know everybody going crazy over Beyonce, but y'all was listening to Luther. Ryan, you too young for this, but let me tell you something. Some of them old... Some of them old songs. I'm looking at all these old folk looking in here like they so sanctified. Watch this. Do -do, do -do, do -do. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, look at them. They body start, oh. The man said, we got a thing going on. Now I know the new music is all out there. They just talk about all their body parts and all of that. But we knew what he was talking about. Then me and Sarita's days, they had a group talking about, he's mine, you may have had him once, but I had him all the time. <laughs> I'm looking around just <laughs> see where the deliverance need to take place. I can't believe these young people listening to Lil Wayne. You have Michael Jackson.
You had the glitter glove. Oh, I know I had my Jerry Crow. I had it. <laughs> he said Billie Jean wasn't his lover. She just a girl. I ain't gonna mess with y'all, Prince, but listen. <laughs> My point is, if you're trying to go forward while looking back, you're gonna miss God's blessings on your life. The Bible says all of these people, they, if they had been mindful of where they came from, they would have gave up. But you know what? They kept on moving forward. And watch this. The Bible says, and God is proud to call them his children. Which means God is proud of you when you show back up on that job and do it to the glory of God. And nobody ever gives you a thank you. No, you said I'm doing it for God. When you show up for your children and say, I'm not going to date right now because my babies is too young and I can't bring a pedophile in my house right now. So I got to wait on God to bring the person for me. God says I'm proud of you. When you give your tithe and offering and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. He says, I'm proud of you. He said, I'm proud of you. Lift your hands all over the house. The danger of attempting to move forward while looking back. God, we lift our hands. They become antennas. They become the holy Wi-Fi signal that we're submitting to you. Forgive us, God, for peeking over our shoulder. Forgive us, God, for thinking over our shoulder. Forgive some of us for fully turning around and going back, then trying to go forward, then going back, then trying to go forward. And God, you told me to preach this so that the people can be released from paralysis. We bind paralysis in the spirit in this church. We release the people of God into God's future for their life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, pull on your children's heart. Touch their mind. Let them know that what you have in store for them is better than what they're leaving. And now, dear Lord God, with tears in their eyes, with hurt in their bosom, with pain in their emotions, with confusion in their mind, Lord, they're choosing to follow you. They choose to follow you, Lord. So we come to Bible class. We come to Sunday school. We come to church to hear your word, dear Lord God, so we can keep moving forward. Dear Lord God, we know your word is like medicine to our bones, God. And we say, fill us up. God with everything that we need for life and godliness and now dear Lord God we break the bondage of cyclic sin in the house reoccurring sin reoccurring sin reoccurring events reoccurring reoccurring every two weeks with falling back falling back every three weeks they're falling they're falling they're falling release them now Give them back their manhood, their womanhood. Give them back their virginity in you. Give them back, dear Lord God, body wholeness, dear Lord God. Give them the right mindset for you. And you, in time, God, will bring our children along. You'll bring our youth along. You'll, you'll bring some of our adult children, Lord. Lord, forgive us for giving bad examples to our adult children. But, Lord, we're putting them in your hands. And we know that you can call them, to Lord God, to also come to you. So, Lord, do it in this house. Let miracles of change, God, take place. Lord, I don't come asking that you would bless your people with cars, houses, fame, or money. Give us change change on the inside and Lord we will follow you in Jesus name amen come on give the Lord a hand praise all over
The altar is open. Come on. Somebody needs to come for prayer. Play Moving Forward uh, by Israel. We haven't had that in a long time.